Hey everybody, welcome back to the Cardboard Cave. Here to continue my Star Trek obsession. Um, as my wife and I go through the next generation. I was a big fan of the original series and now I'm a big fan of the next generation all these years later. And uh, so the obsession is just now catching up with me. Now what I want to show you here looks like a toy, if you know anything about the Star Trek toys. Looks like a toy from 1992 or 1993, but in fact, this is brand new. I just got this in the mail 20 minutes ago from Target.com. $39.99, free shipping. Amazon, I believe, also, or they do also have it, but they were saying it wasn't going to ship for like a month. So I canceled my order from Amazon for the same price because Target said they actually had it in stock, and indeed they did. It came in like two or three days. Um, so if you're waiting on it to come in stock from Amazon, pro tip, this is in stock at Target, at least on the website. I don't, I don't think they have it in the store. But this is a Playmates toy. And Playmates, if you don't know, did an incredible amount of Star Trek toys. An incredible number of Star Trek toys. Figures for characters that are super obscure. Um, and multiple ships of different sizes. And they were the big name in Star Trek. But there's lots of great videos about the rise and fall of Playmates and their Star Trek line. I won't get into that, but what I will get into is um, good timing for me because I'm just now getting into the Playmates Star Trek toys and the long history of it. And I did not realize, I was looking for not this exact model. I'll explain there's some new things here. But I was looking for the Enterprise D. This is, this is the Starship Enterprise from Next Generation. And I was looking for this specific one specific ship in a similar scale, a similar model from Playmates, very similar, used or new on eBay. And I was, I'll go and tell you, I was very close to pulling the trigger and paying more than $40. And then I realized, wait a minute, Playmates just released this model, which is basically exactly what I'm looking for. And I can get it brand new, less than what these are on eBay. Although, to be honest, the ones on eBay are pretty reasonable considering they're 30 years old. So this one, again, is a 2023 release. And they also did the original series Star Trek. <sighs> Don't tell my wife. I also have that one on the way. Uh, 39 bucks on Amazon for that one. Um, so it is in stock, and I believe it came out last year. But I believe this one's brand new because, like I said, Amazon still doesn't quite have it. Uh, but Target does. So... This is the Starship Enterprise, next generation. Press here to activate Enterprise. So we'll see if that's if that actually works, the try me function. Let's look at some of the details. It has dual light up engines, authentic sounds and phrases, highly detailed 15 inch replica of the Starship Enterprise, saucer section separation and display stand included. It includes one ship, one display stand, and three AAA batteries, which are included. Very nice, Playmates. That may be bad news if you buy this in 30 years when this itself is a is a retro item. But right, because they batteries can corrode over time. But right now, that's pretty awesome. We don't have to hunt for batteries. Actual sounds from the Star Trek TV show includes full saucer separation. So straight up, I'm no expert. I've only very recently, as in in the last couple of weeks, started looking into these Star Trek toys. And from Playmates. And there's two Enterprise Ds that I've found that are like this size, roughly, in this scale. Um, one of them had no display stand, so it just kind of laid down flat. Which, for a toy, might be okay, but for me, as someone who plans to display it, it was not great. But what it did have is lights. I don't remember if that original one had sounds. It definitely had lights, um, but no display stand. And then they came out with one that does have a display stand and has sounds and phrases from the show, but did not have any lights whatsoever. And the lights are cool, you know? So this one has the best of both worlds. It has a display stand, although I don't think it shows anywhere on the box. And we'll look at the back in a second. 
but it says it does include it. And I'll be honest with you, that was my first concern. I was like, I don't think this thing is going to come with a stand because none of the advertisements show it, but it does. So this one has a stand. It has the sounds and it has the lights. So this has the best of both models plus a separatable saucer, which I don't think either of the other ones had. I don't care about that as much, but it's an extra feature. Um, so it has everything the old ones had, as far as I can tell, and then some. So the top is just the exact same thing we read on the, uh, on the front. This side is the exact same thing. The other side is the exact same thing. So you can't miss the details. The bottom is different, but basically it's got the... Oh, Star Trek Universe. That's the new line. Uh, whenever Playmates did a line of, of figures, you know, it, it would be um, the Generations line or Strike Force or whatever. They always had a different name for it. This is the Universe line. Um, basically, it's just the legalese down here. Uh, 2023 CBS Studios, 2023. So again, this is brand new. 2023, ages four and up. The model number is 63216, and I don't see that on the front. No, there it is. Item number 63216. And that leaves just the back. And one thing right away I'll say about the back is it does not show the display stand anywhere. I'm glad it says it has a display stand, or I would still not believe it does. It shows the full saucer separation. The Galaxy class flagship of the United States, the United States, of the United Federation of Planets. Um, let's see here. You got the 10 Ford Lounge, the lifeboat station. I love the fact that they're pointing these things out and there's really nothing you can see, <laughs> but they're just telling you that's where it would be. This, of course, is the saucer module, reaction control thruster, upper sensor platform, main bridge. Linear Phaser Array. Uh, light up warp engines, nacelle, warp field grill, docking port, light up bussard, bussard hydrogen collector, Ford photon torpedo launcher, navigational reflector and long range sensor array, battle section, just showing you where all these things would be. Uh, yeah, and then it shows the lights. Press a button to activate weapon systems, sounds, and command phrases. Oops, sorry. And then it's showing you the other things in this line. There are several figures. There's some for Discovery. And some from, I believe, the motion picture, the original series motion picture. And then so far for Next Generation, there is... Picard, Data, and Rocker. But I believe there will be more. I hope so. Unless this really doesn't do well, then there may not be. But there's the communicator, the phaser, and the original Enterprise ship, which does show a stand. Even though it doesn't show one anywhere on the box for this. Anyways, I think that's pretty much what the box shows. Oh, here's a Q code you can scan for parents only. I guess that's probably assembly instructions if you don't want to use the paper. All right, well, let's open it up right quick. There's no tape or anything, which this was shipped to me, you know, from the Target warehouse, so it doesn't bother me. I guess if you were to buy this used, you would have a harder time telling if it's actually been opened or not. But let's just go and open it up. We're not going to completely like assemble it and put all the stickers on. I'm pretty sure there's gonna be stickers because I'm probably going to do a review of this ship and the original series ship as one video. I lied, there is tape. Oh, wow, it's super hard to see. Wow, I'm blind. I apologize, I didn't think there was tape. We'll take care of that. See, I'm going to do a video of this and the original series ship. So I'm not going to like fully assemble it and put all the stickers on. That would just bore you to tears. Of course, if you're watching this, you probably are a certain kind of person already. A person like me, and I appreciate that. You're okay slowing down and just having a video on while you do some 
maybe mundane work or something. And it's just comforting. Okay. Looks like some fancy packaging. Because there's the, you can see the saucer already. This looks like no fuss packaging. I think it's just going to come out as one piece. Oh, shoot. You know what I should have done before I did all this? Sorry about that. The try me on the box where you can actually push it. I should have tried to push it. Oh, photon torpedoes. All right, so yeah, I guess the battery's already in it, so you can try it in the box. And well, forget what I said about assembly. This thing is basically assembled already. That's not sure what I expected, but that's nice. Minimal packaging, a box, and this tray, and that's it. Like, there's not a bunch of cardboard to fuss with. I honestly really like that. A single instruction manual, which shows you... Um, we're changing the batteries, battery instructions, batteries, batteries, batteries. There's an on, off, and demo mode. I assume it's turned to demo mode right now. It says, assemble the saucer onto the body as shown. You'll hear a click. Gently pull on the saucer section to make sure it's locked in place. Assembly the display stand by snapping the arm. Okay, I might actually just go and assemble this now then and not do a separate video because this looks really easy. To separate the saucer, hold the saucer and press the button on the main body of the ship. Pull the saucer section out. To power on, move it from demo or off to on. Lights will come on for a few seconds. The back is blank. That's it. Hey, I appreciate that. Simple enough. Well, a single sheet and half of that is just batteries. Okay, well, let's do this then. There's no stickers. I am genuinely excited about that. I'm going to go and tell you, rarely do things get better with time, but I think this might be a vast improvement over the original models. And for $39.99, the originals were, I think, $30. I've seen like Toys R Us stickers on them. But $30.92, that's like 50 something dollars now. That's like 55 bucks, I believe, once you count for inflation. So honestly, for 40 bucks, so far, I'm going to say this is an improvement over the previous Playmates of this scale. Which I believe are the biggest ones Playmates did. Uh, let's get this part out first. It's probably going to be in here pretty well. Oh, there we go. Not too bad. All right. It is currently on demo mode. I can get all my own shadow here. Sorry, I'll, you probably can't read those words. I can barely read them and I have it in person. But it's currently on demo mode. I'll turn it off and we'll turn it on when we're ready. I'm going to tell you the one negative with this, and I think it's what everyone else has said, the only negative, I think, for a toy that's 40 bucks, is the sheer number of screws. My gosh, there's so many screws to put this thing together. It's going to make it not as impressive looking from the underneath. From the top, great. And I'm sorry, I'm getting in my own stinking shadow. From the top, basically no screws. From the bottom, a bunch of screws, but it is what it is. Let's go ahead and get... <clears throat> I guess no toy is perfect. And in Playmates history, if I've learned anything over my research lately, they never released a perfect toy, but that's part of what people love about them. <laughs> There's part of the stand right here. The stand is clear, which is, I'm more than fine with that. It can give the illusion of flying a little bit. There's that part of the stand. And the other part is down here underneath where the, the body of the ship was. I gotta tell you, this is pretty easy packaging compared to most things that I've had recently. I'm ex ex ecstatic about, and there's the base of the stand. So the stand is that base, plus this, that's it. I'm ecstatic about no stickers. I fully expected there to be stickers. Fully expected it. And no matter what I do, I'm right in my own shadow. The lighting in this basement is very bright and very nice, but 
there's just no way to, to get away from the shadows that I've found. Um, I'll try to work on that before I do another video. We'll see how that turns out. So, the stand. Simply goes... Like this. Clicks in. There's one side. Okay, am I satisfied with that? No, I'm not really satisfied with that. I hope it snaps in a little better than that. Oh no, that might be it. I guess that's all right. Yeah, I guess that's all right. There's the stand. Very uh, clear, which is nice. So now let's put the saucer section on. I guess we can show you the saucer separately as well. I am genuinely surprised that there's no stickers. For example, on the old one, I believe that was a sticker. There was some print on the old one, but I think even that might have been a sticker. Then we got the underneath part. Again, no stickers now. I like these. Like translucent. There's where the saucer attaches on. There's actually little, oops, sorry, metal connectors in there. Again, probably the one complaint everybody's going to have is going to be the same complaint, and that is that there's screws everywhere on the bottom. I mean, gosh, I mean, I feel like this thing's not going to fall apart because there's so many screws, but I do wonder if they couldn't have done something to have, I don't know, if, you, if not cover them up, you just have fewer of them. I don't know. It is what it is, though. Um, I guess maybe they're trying to pass off the screws on the saucer section as the, the linear phaser array. I mean, literally that's what it shows on the box. I mean, that's definitely a screw hole that it's pointing to. I don't know. I'm not sure anybody's going to buy that, but I guess maybe, yeah, maybe you could look at it that way. Let's just go and put it together though. I don't want to sound too negative because just holding this thing in my hands again for the price point. Ooh, look at that. That is so nice. For the price point, I'm very pleased. I'm pleased it comes with a stand and also has the lights and the sounds. Snaps together like a cinch. And the button is right here. I'm going to show you that. Button. Release. And put back on. The first time I did it was a cinch. Oops. There, I think I got it. Yeah, it's it's connected. Yeah. Wow. Very nice. Very nice model. Love the use of the translucent plastic. I mean, all that. And all that's going to light up, which I'm about to show you. This, I'm sure, was a sticker on the old one. Now everything is printed on. I love these windows that are printed on here. Let's see if we can get a little wider view here. Look, the saucer's pretty appropriate. It's not super fat. Like I know some people complain the saucer's too fat on these toys or on Enterprise toys in general. Looks good. And it said it was 15 inches and I feel like that's, that's accurate. I mean, it's definitely over a foot, I can tell. Um, 15 inches long. And underneath, there are a lot of screw holes, but... If you can accept that those on the saucer are the linear phaser array, then I guess it's not so bad. Let's go and put it on the stand and then try the light up functions and we'll bring the camera down here up close. So the stand is super simple. 
And this is the peg hole. Oh, snaps in nice. Oh, and you can adjust it. Except I'm pretty dang sure I put the stain in backwards. No, I didn't. Okay. I guess it just is up all the way. I always get nervous doing this for the first time. I'm going to take it off the stand. Okay. Okay, so yeah, I think I just didn't have the stand up all the way. You can really angle the ship in different angles, but you should have a normal arrangement, I assume. Let's see. I assume... This has to, yeah, this has to go up more vertically. Okay, there we go, yeah. I just didn't want to push it if I didn't know for sure. <laughs> so there we go. There's pretty much vertical. Oops, sorry. So this can move up and down, this white part. I wish this snapped in more securely, but I guess once you got the weight of the ship on it, it's not going anywhere. I just feel like... Aha! Okay, so word of advice... Set the stand on a hard surface and then push this in. I don't know why I made that sound effect. Because <laughs> if you try to, while you're just holding it, you can't really snap it in like you're supposed to. Oh, yeah. Now I can see the little tabs are under here. Yep, set it on a hard surface. It'll snap in. That's what you need to do. You're gonna, it's going to fall over. So now, like I said, we'll just put this in here. Snaps in super easy. And it feels very secure. Snaps in just like that. And now we'll move this down where you can see better. And the whole thing's falling over because apparently I still don't have it snapped in all the way. That's what I get for saying this is so easy. All right, come on. I've been so pleased with you. Don't let me down now. Somehow one side is still not snapped in all the way. Only the front is. Lord have mercy, okay. They look like they were in good, but apparently they're not. This is why we do this on live video that I'm not going to edit. Snapping the base into the arm. All right, well, I'm trying to snap the base into the arm. Because I heard that crack, which sounds horrible, but I think it actually means I'm doing it right now. <laughs> this base is not meant to come apart once it's together, so I guess you really got to push it together to get it right. Okay, it is now sturdy. I apologize. Pro tip number two, when you're assembling the stand, put it on a hard surface and give it a good push. Don't, don't be too gentle with it. You, and then tug on it just to make sure you're in good. Because now I'm in good. I can tell I'm in good. Yes. Now we're in business. Now we're cooking with fire, as they say. I assume the stand is fine now that it's together. It seems to be... Like it'll just stay that way and I don't have to worry about taking it apart. And I do not plan to take it apart. And now, like I said, this is so easy. <laughs> Every time you hear me say this is so easy on one of these videos, get ready for something to epically fail. Oops, I just turned it on. No, we're not ready for you to turn on yet. It's got to be a surprise. I turned it on to demo mode. There we go. All right. Huh. Aha. Uh -huh. So you, okay. So you can adjust it just a little bit, even once it's on there, it seems. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So let's go ahead. And now we will turn it on. And then we'll get the camera in close for you. So when I turned it on, it said the lights will come on for a few seconds. And indeed they are. And now let's try some of the buttons. Lock on photon torpedoes. So look, there's lights even up here. I didn't expect that. I press the same button again, what happens? Fine. Engage. Red alert. Raise the shield. Lock on photon torpedoes. Fine. Engage. Red alert. 
All right, so that's all the ones for the first button. Those are all phrases. What about the middle button? I'm thinking the middle button must be sound effects. As long as you're pressing buttons. All right, there's no lights underneath. I was, there are, oh, I'm gonna show you that in a second. There are lights underneath. I'm just genuinely impressed that uh, you can see lights from the bridge here. I thought it was just gonna be this. I, honestly, I did. Heck, what are we doing? Let's turn the lights off in here. It's part of a mess. Ooh, that's dark. That might be a little too dark. <laughs> All right, so we're doing the middle button here. All right, we've heard that one. There's the alert. All right, so that's the two sounds for the middle button. Now about the third one. There's the photon torpedoes. I don't think the lights change with the sounds. They're just on if you're making sounds. I would not expect them to. I mean, the Playmobil set I have, the lights change with the sounds, but that was $350. <laughs> this was $39.99. So there you go, I think that's all the sounds. Before we turn the lights back on though, I wanted to show you. By the way, it looks so washed out, like this looks orange and this looks almost white. On the camera, it does not look that way in person. In person, this is red and this is blue. Um, so that's just unfortunately because of the camera. But look at this. Here's a front view. Ah, the lights do turn off pretty quick once you stop pressing buttons. Isn't that cool? Got an awesome blue light right there as well. This is a dang cool looking toy for the price. And I believe if you just turn it off and back on, the lights come on for a longer period of time. I gotta be honest, that clear base was a good choice. Because <laughs> with the lights off, it certainly looks like it's floating. Might actually be better if we remove the box from the back here. Yeah, right, let's turn the lights back on real quick and give you our final thoughts. Areas of improvement, areas they got right. Is it worth the price? You probably already know what I'm gonna say there. So, I'm just gonna say it. If you're a fan of Star Trek, the original series or Enterprise, I'm actually watching Enterprise currently in addition to Next Generation. If you're a fan of Star Trek, the original series or Next Generation, you got to get this. I mean, if you're just a fan of the Enterprise ship in general, it's just so good for the money. I mean, this is beyond what I expected because this is, I mean, it's sort of a toy. It's sort of a collectible. I guess it's somewhere in between, but I did not expect it to be all print, no stickers, um, all print, you know, I did not expect that. I did not expect um, to get a model this nice with the sounds, the lights, and the display stand, plus a removable saucer if you care about that. It looks great from the top, from above. Looks great from behind. And of course, possibly the best from the sides. Again, I think it looks better if we don't have a busy background. The clear display stand, which I figured out, you gotta put it on a hard surface and really press down until everything is secure. I think it's gonna be fine. The fact that it's clear, I think makes it look maybe more flimsy than it really is. 
Um, so I was afraid to press down hard, but you've got to, to get it connected. And now I believe we're good to go. It's, I mean, if you touch it, it's wobbly. I mean, the ship's going to wobble, but it's perfectly fine. I mean, this is a carpeted setting where if anything, it's less stable and I'm hitting the thing pretty good and it's not falling over. Short of somebody running into it or an earthquake, you're good. I think the only disappointment for some people is going to be the number of screw holes. Um, but honestly, unless you're displaying this thing hanging from the ceiling above your head, I think it looks great from every angle. I mean, even slightly from below. Well, that's very below, I guess. Even like that, it's fine. I mean, you have to get totally underneath, really. And again, those aren't screw holes. Those are linear phaser arrays. So you're good. But no, seriously. Don't let that stop you. The detail for the price is just so good. All right, I've gone on long enough. Thanks for watching. I'm very impressed. I'm happy that my original series Enterprise is on the way. And uh, I got to say, get it. Get it while you can for $39.99. It's frankly, compared to other Star Trek toys, a bit of a bargain. Um, it kind of makes the Playmobil one feel more overpriced, although that one is massive by comparison. Um, but the fact this is 40 dollars feels <laughs> feels pretty good all right thanks for watching the cardboard cave